Hello, are you there? Is it time? It's 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock noon. 12 o'clock sharp. 12 o'clock on the dot. And so if you're there, send me a signal. Dame una señal. Give me a signal. Send me a signal that you are there. And in order for me to know that I'm not speaking into a void, void, un vacío aquí, yell null and void, and uh, somebody say, hi, Richard, it's me, I'm here. Don't worry, we can see you, we can hear you. Can you see me? Can you hear me? En español se diría, me oyes, me ves, me oyes, o me oís, me veis. Pero en inglés, no. I can put it upon a can. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Can you hear me? So far, no, no responses. I have an eerie feeling. Eerie means that I'm in the middle of a void. I'm floating. Ah, Leo, I can hear you. <laughs> well, Leo, thank you very much, Leo Shiba. I don't know where you're calling, where you're writing from, but thank you. And Cesar, hi Richard from China. Será posible de la China? Wow, from China. And Professor Omar, thank you. Hi, we can do, we can do. Okay, good. Well, it's good to have you. So let's start. I'll answer some of your questions if you have questions. If not, bear with me. Mercedes, hello. Uh, bear with me. Aguantad conmigo. Se dice mucho bear with me. Ten paciencia conmigo. Se dice bear, como oso, la palabra oso. Bear with me. Hello, Javier. We can hear you and see you perfectly. Very good. Loud and clear. Se dice mucho alto y claro. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Wow, a lot of people. Jose Delgado, I can hear you. All right. Okay. I, I get the message. I get the message means... Mensaje recibido. Ariadna. Wow, Farri. Hello, how are you? Nice name. I like your name. But bear with me. Tened paciencia conmigo porque tengo el primer... Hoy es mi primer día de un resfriado. I th I'm not sure if it's going to be a strong cold or a mild cold. Mild is the opposite of strong. Of course, a strong, strong person, weak. Strong, weak. For fuerte, Debbie. Now, strong, mild. For example, a cigarette. Ooh, este cigarro muy fuerte. Mild. El tabaco muy suave. I'm not an expert on smoking, but I know this. Weather. The weather is cold. Cold temperatures, hot temperatures, mild temperatures. And mild manner de modales suaves. For example, you remember Clark Kent? Clark Kent. The very first Superman comic book was published, I think... Well, more people are writing in. No, flu, no. Uh, Jose, Jose Delgado. Flu is la gripe. It's, 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 it's more, it's stronger. And we don't say a flu. In Spanish, una, tengo, he cogido un, 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 un gripe, una gripe. No, we say the flu. Siempre, la gripe. The flu, the flu. Always. And the flu is one or two weeks strong, you can't work, you have fever, and uh, it, it's the flu. But a cold, bah, a cold is in the moleste, it's something bad. But anyways, Ali, how are you? Ali Quintanilla, very, very good. Cesar, are you horse? No. Has escrito mal horse. Hay que intercalar una A. O arse. Eso es afónico. No, I'm not a horse. I'm not a horse. Ahora, si quieres saber si soy un caballo... And told the things you can see, are you a horse? I'm not a horse, I think. And I'm not horse. And hay un caballo fafónico. There's a horse, horse. And oh, oikles, oikles de cos. Good morning, my greatest teacher. I endeavor to attend your teaching whenever possible. It's great. But endeavor como verbo ahí es un poco rimbombante, eh? I try to attend. Mucho mejor que endeavor. Aunque endeavor es una palabra preciosa, endeavor es un poco rimbombante. En este caso, un poco pasa. Te pasas un poco. Bear with me. Aguantad conmigo. Aguanten conmigo. Significa que con me. With my handkerchief. And my sniffles. Sniffles. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I'll survive. I'll survive. Yeah. Que remedio. Somebody has to teach English. 
on Mondays. Now, I mean, if something happens to me, well, come on. And so um, somebody has to be here. It has to be me. Okay. And so I, I am obliged to be here for the rest of my life. So let's continue. Wow. A lot of people are writing. Miguel Angel, how are you? Thank you, Richard, for your English teaching. Well, it's, it's a pleasure. What are we going to do today? Well, good, too bad. It's too bad. I've been teaching that on the radio lately. It's too bad. Too bad. Too, T-O-O, too, has two meanings. También. Yeah. This is a watch. Well, this is a pen, and this is a pen, too. All right. Now, but too also is demasiado. Yes. I'm too... The... The camera's too far away to, I can't touch it. And um, I'm going to put, let's see, I'm going to touch the ceiling, but I can't, it's too high. It's too high, too. Demasiado. Too much is demasiado cuando es sustantivo. Singular. Tengo demasiado tiempo libre. I have too much free time. I don't have enough free time or I have too much free time. And too many para contables so plurales. Uh, tengo demasiados problemas hoy. I have too many problems today. Too many, too. But too, the expression too bad has two meanings. Uno es demasiado malo. It's not too bad. How are you today? Not too bad. ¿Qué tal hoy? ¿Cómo estás hoy? Va. Bien. Bien. Se dice mucho en inglés, not too bad. Literalmente no demasiado malo. Not too bad. César. How are you, Cesar? It's good to have you. I think it's a vi no, it's not. It's a. Uh, I don't think I have a virus that has spread worldwide because I'm on the opposite side of the world and I have a cold too. Cold. De hecho, los árabes dicen, ¿qué tal estás hoy? Dicen, estoy bien. He pasado mi resfriado por este año. <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. But in any case, maybe it's a worldwide virus. Un virus. A virus. Yeah. We need to be strong and to fight the virus. But too bad, repito, demasiado malo, pero too bad tiene un segundo significado, que es, es una pena. Ah, oh, it's too bad. Your English is not perfect? No? Oh, that's too bad. I'm really sorry. That's too bad. Too bad. De hecho, los niños para pinchar, uno dicen, oh, poor, pobre Pedrito. Oh, too bad. So sad. I'm glad. Qué pena, tan triste, me alegro. <laughs> Too bad, so sad, I'm glad. When we're little, little children, los niños son muy crueles, ¿eh? <laughs> y los adolescentes también. Sobre todo las adolescentas, ¿eh? Más que sometimes they're very, muy crueles, ¿eh? Too bad, so sad, I'm glad. Too bad, ah, oh, too bad, that's too bad. Your English isn't perfect? I'm sorry, that's too bad. Qué pena. What a pity. What a shame. That's too bad. What a pity. Lo he dicho dos veces en mi vida. What a shame. Dos veces en mi vida. That's too bad. Cien mil veces en mi vida. The only time I say it's a pity or it's a shame, porque lastima, o es una lastima, is in English class. The moment I walk out of English class, I never use those. I say, it's too bad. Ah, that's too bad. Uh, tu, tu madre está enferma. Ay, que pena. Ay, that's too bad. I'm really sorry. It's too bad. So, where are we? I'm losing my place. Jesus Mendoza, I hope you are, I hope you get well, son, or soon. Será soon, no? So, we need you. Mm. Jesus, don't type too quickly. Be more careful. Sin prisa, pero sin pausa. Bueno, yeah. Yes. We say, there's a, there's a wonderful expression in Spanish, Visteme despacio que tengo prisa. <laughs> Quiere decir que las prisas te traicionan muchas veces. So, uh, Jesús, I hope you get well soon, comma, espacio, we need you. All right, and I need you too. Que haría yo sin estudiantes. Claudia, hello, Richard. Hello, Claudia. And César again, how, how, how about when people say, I'm sorry, it is, it's my bad. It's my bad. No lo yo nunca en mi vida. I'm sorry. It's my bad. Sorry. I need to see it in a context. When people say, I'm sorry, that's too bad. Ay, lo siento, que pena. 
I'm sorry, that's, that is, that's, that's too bad, but not, it's my bad. I've never heard that in my life, sorry. Jesus, soon, of course, with double O, soon, oh, Frida, wow, Frida, how are you? Is this your first time? Frida, este video queda grabado? I don't know, Marta, yeah? Marta, we're seeing Marta, yo no soy nadie. Eh? Marta, es, es, ¿dónde? Facebook, de Baugan? All right. Y luego en YouTube, creo. Bueno, Baugan Facebook. Baugan, Grupo Baugan.com y nuestro Facebook. Ahí estaré, supongo. I don't know. So, aquí soy un mandado. Yeah. I'm the big boss, se supone. I'm the big boss. I'm the, soy el mandamás, ¿no? I'm the big boss. I'm the big fish. Yeah. I am the head honcho. Corto bacalao, pero no, soy más bien un mandado muchas veces. So, um, I'm here to teach. It's the only thing I know how to do. I don't know how to do anything else except teach, teach English. So, you know, it's too bad. It's too bad your English isn't perfect. I'm sorry your English isn't perfect. I'm sorry I'm glad. I'm sorry I'm glad. Frida, muy second time. ¿Qué significa muy second time? Ah, oh, my, my, ah, oh, my. You're typing too fast. Be careful with your typing. Second time, time con minúscula. My second time. Okay, Fried, it's your second time. And Ro Roser, oh, Rose, Rosa. Hello, Mr. Richard. Mr. Vaughn, hello, Richard. See you, Mr. Mr. Richard sounds strange. It's like saying, Señor Paco. Claro, en los pueblos dicen... Hoy vamos a cenar con, con viene el señor Paco, el señor Pepe, el señor Rodolfo. Okay. Uh, but it's, it sounds strange to say Mr. Richard. Mr. Richard. So just Mr. Vaughn or just Richard. All right. So let's go on. And Charito. Wow, Charito. Rosario. Charito. I, lo I lovely thank you. ¿Qué significa I lovely? Lovely means encantador o encantadora. Yo encantador, gracias. Hmm. You're going to have to clear. I, th I understand, I think, what you mean. I love, no, no sé. I lovely, lovely means encantador. Le hemos pasado una velada encantadora. It's been a lovely evening. Thank you very much. Ha sido una anfitriona estupenda. You've been an excellent hostess, and we have had a lovely evening. Thank you so much. Yes, it's a pity I can I can follow you. No, Siri, it's a pity I can't follow you. Negativo, no? Es una lástima que no te puedo seguir que estoy en un autobús. It's a pity. That's from, ¿de quién es? Alicia de la Loma. Alicia. All right. So, it's, a, it's too bad I can't follow you. I'm on the bus. I'm on the bus, I'm on the bus, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. Fijaos, fíjate como uso la M de trampoline. I'm on, I'm on the bus, I'm on the bus. It's a pity I can't follow you. It's a shame I can't follow you. It's too bad I can't follow you. I wish you could. Ojalá pudieras, pero no puedes. I wish you could, but you can't. Yes. Yeah, no soy rico. Qué lástima. Es una pena que yo no sea rico. It's too bad I'm not rich. I wish I were. But I'm not. You know, I need three arms. Sometimes I'm carrying something, a, hem, a tray, una bandeja, with, and then I need to open the door. And so I need to use my elbow to open the door. If I had three arms, of course, I could carry a heavy tray and use my third arm to open the door. You know, it's too bad. It's too bad I don't have three arms. I wish I, I, wish I did, but I don't. I wish I did, but I don't. Yes, I'm not the most intelligent person in the world. I wish I were, but I'm not. It's too bad. It's a pity. It's too bad I'm not the most intelligent person in the world. I wish I were, but I'm not. I wish I were. Ojalá lo fuera, pero no lo soy. I wish I were, but I'm not. Siento no ser el más. I'm sorry I'm not the most intelligent person in the world. Yes, and I'm an English teacher. Poof. That's the worst job in the world, teaching English. I wish I weren't. I'm, it's too bad I'm an English teacher. I don't know how to do anything else. I don't know. It's, it's too bad. It's too bad I don't know 
how to do anything except teach English. I wish I did, but I don't. Ojalá si supiera algo. I wish I did, but I don't. Estoy usando de forma dinámica los pronombres. Digo pronombres, sí. Los um, verbos auxiliares, perdona. I wish I did, but I don't. This isn't made of gold. Este, este bolero, este lapicero, como dicen en Latinoamérica, en muchos países latinoamericanos. Este lapicero o este bolígrafo, como dicen aquí en España, no está hecho de oro. Y es una lástima que no esté hecho de oro. Ojalá lo fuera, pero no lo es. O no lo está. This pen isn't made of gold. I'm sorry it's not made of gold. It's too bad it's not made of gold. Es una lástima. I wish it were, but it's not. I wish it were, but it's not. Oh, my cold. Ah, Menendez. Claudia. All right. Hello, Richard. Thank you for... Thank you for being there even with a runny nose. Yeah. Se me cae el boco, como se dice. Aquí. A runny nose. Yes. Yes. I'm like the postman. I deliver the, the postman or the mailman delivers the mail in the sunshine, in the rain, in the snow. And I teach English in the sun, in the rain, in the snow. It's an incredible sacrifice. You don't know how much I'm sacrificing for you. <laughs> All right. Candora. Amiga de Pandora, la de la caja. Candora. Hi, Richard. It's a pleasure to listen to you one more time. Uh, what do you think about Spain, one of the most visited countries in the world? but where the level of English is still low. Uh, would you agree that the best business or job opportunities are in the are in tourism, seems the and export industries? I don't know. I think they're job opportunities. The job market in Spain is complicated. Eh? And yes, the, the English level is low in Spain, but it's low in Italy, in France, in Russia, in China, in Japan, in Indonesia. In Argentina, in Colombia, in Mexico. Mexico is right next to the United States, and the English level is lower there than here. In all countries that are big, in area and in population, the English level is low, even in Germany. If you scratch the surface, eso dije la semana pasada, si raspas, rascas la superficie, si hurgas un poco, you will see that Middle level people, the English level is not very good. Only in small countries like Denmark, Sweden, in population or in area, the Netherlands, Portugal, you find people speak several languages. A lot of people in Portuguese speak good English and pretty good French too. Small countries. But in big countries that have traditionally, historically, big domestic markets, Learning languages was not a, a necessity. So these, these countries are behind. Sufren un retraso en resolver el tema de inglés. All right, but uh, the business, where to find job opportunities? There are job opportunities anywhere. I mean, look. Ah, las páginas amarillas. Ya no se publican. Pero hay miles de oportunidades aquí. De crear tu propio negocio. You know, simplemente empieza a trabajar en un, una tienda de, ascen, de conservación y mantenimiento de ascensores. Y en 20 años puede ser el rey de los ascensores. Anything you go, anything you look for. Ayala y abogados, ruidos, actividades molestas, comunidades de propietarios. They're everywhere. There, there are job opportunities everywhere. But you need to start Humbly, de forma humilde, aprender el negocio y luego hacerlo mejor que los demás. But first you need to learn. Hay que aprender un oficio o un negocio, una actividad profesional, laboral. You have to learn it. Pay attention. Notice the business process. Y cómo funciona el proceso de negocio. Es decir, yo puedo hacerlo mejor. Y luego te montas enfrente y ya. Tú eres tu propio jefe y te haces un imperio. That's the idea. That's the idea. And you can create an empire from anything. 
pens. El señor Bic, el señor Beach, the Frenchman, diseñó este tipo, this, this type of pen. This is a Bic pen. It's called Bic, B-I-C, because the Frenchman, the, the person who designed the, and little plus after, the person who designed these pens in the late 1950s was El Señor Bic in French, pero se, se, se escribía B-I-C-H, it's when a bitch. And so people said, look, chain, take off the H, it's Bic pens. So making pens, this man became one of the richest men in France. You can become rich and you can become independent and you can create empires, stimulating empires with any activity, any activity. But you need to keep your eyes open. You need to <laughs> use a sense of smell and you need to work very, very hard. Okay, so where are we? Abelardo, how are you? Hello from Huelva. Huelva, tenemos un onubense en... Yes, we have a person from Huelva, Ciudad de la Industria Química y de Fertilizantes, Huelva. All right, and also the Rocío, probably the most interesting um, festival in Spain. More than the Feria de Sevilla, que están en, it's only one place. The Fallas de Valencia, only in Valencia. And in Pamplona, the San Fermín is only in Pamplona, but in... Uh, in the in the Rocío, they go for about 60, 70, 80 kilometers, I don't know, traveling. It's an interesting festival. So, Abelardo, thank you for coming. Uh, Ubi, Ubi Shelley. Hello, Richard. I'm saying hello from Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia. But I'm Colombian. Logico. Colombiano. Donde va a estar? En Melbourne. Eh? <laughs> it's just as, as logical as the the weather today, eh? which is not very logical. Yes, from Melbourne. Well, I hope you're enjoying Melbourne. Los entiendes cuando hablan? You know. I can't. I'm from Melbourne. 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 <laughs> Melbourne. Melbourne. It's interesting. Uh, the Americans say Canberra and the Australians Canberra. And the Americans say Brisbane and the Australians say Brisbane. 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 It's like in England called Birmingham. There are two Bir Birmingham, as you say in Spanish. There are two Birminghams in the English-speaking world. Birmingham, England, and Birmingham, Alabama, in the United States. Now, the people in Alabama say, I'm from Birmingham. Birmingham. And in England, they say, I'm from boom, 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 boom. I mean, it's like night and day. Birmingham, boom, 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 boom. All right. Melbourne. Well, uh, Ubi, it's a pleasure to have you. Susana, Susana, yes. Hello, can I improve my speaking? To me, it's very difficult. <laughs> well, of course you can improve your speaking. And it's not difficult. Querer es poder. Where there's a will, there's a way. Donde hay voluntad, hay un camino. Where there's a will, there's a way. Speak to the wall. Start, learn how to talk to the wall. And at the beginning, you'll feel like an idiot. <laughs> Hello, wall, how are you? Uh, you uh, look different today than yesterday. Is there a problem? The wall has a problem today, I think. Uh, you know, you look pale. Te veo pálido. You look pale. Yesterday, there were colors in your face, but today, no. Uh, please tell me what the problem is. If you don't tell, I can't help you if you don't tell. You can learn how to develop Royo, to learn how to develop a conversation with the wall and just to gain fluency, to gain fluency speaking or read aloud. But it's easy in Spanish to read aloud. You just take a book and you read it. Let's see something. I can't. Let's see. Después de haberte presentado los contenidos técnicos de, en el libro 1, ha llegado el momento de ponerlos en práctica, etc. Bueno, leyendo en español es fácil porque sabes cómo se pronuncia. In English, no. Así que busca cosas de las más sencillas en inglés para niños de, de primero de primaria y le, lee de esas cosas en voz alta para ganar carrilla, y para ganar ímpetu, para ganar impulso y fluidez y, y confianza. Porque si son cosas tremendamente sencillas, normalmente sabes cómo pronunciarlas. All right. So, 
But you need to se, se habla, se, se aprende a hablar hablando. Como decía Antonio Machado, andando se hace camino, el camino se hace al andar. Hablando se hace hablando. All right. César, hello, Mr. Vaughn. It's been such a long time without typing you. No, typing, typing to you, sería. Escribir algo a máquina para ti. I'm César, the English teacher from Alicante. Could you mention what you usually eat in Austin, Texas? Barbecue. On these days, I, in, Tex, in Austin, Texas, I eat Italian food. It's excellent. Chinese food is excellent in Austin. Bar, Texas barbecue. Carne ahumada sobre madera en el hogar durante tres días. Barbecue. It's different. Mexican food. It's delicious in Texas. It's the, the best Mexican food is in Texas. Um, German food. I mean, you can find everything in Austin, Texas. My God. Uh, Japanese. Everything. Vietnamese food. Indonesian food. Argentinian food with the bifes de chorizo, or you can have, you can find Brazilian food, yes, uh, and uh, so you can find everything in Austin, Texas. The food's delicious in the States. And huevos con bacon <laughs> for the breakfast, incredible breakfast, so yes, I miss the food in the States, although the food in Spain is excellent. I still miss because it's different. Not that the food is necessarily better. It's just different and I miss the food. All right, Cesar, thank you. Billy, Billy Franco, Franco, Francovic. Hello and greetings from Veracruz, Mexico, on the Gulf of Mexico. Landing place of Cortez. Yeah. Nice to see you again and, and a great, great program. Today I hope you clear up a doubt about what is said when someone sneezes. Okay. Primero, no usemos la palabra doubt. Doubt es una duda en el sentido de no creer del todo. Por ejemplo, si alguien es agnóstico o es tirando a ateo, dice, tengo mis dudas. I have my doubts. O dudas existenciales, existential doubts. Pero cuando tienes una duda acerca de un punto gramatical o algo, es a question. A question. Uh, perdone, profesor, tengo una duda. Excuse me, uh, teacher, I have a question. Nunca doubt. I have a question. Y también se usa dudar para to hesitate. Voy a forzar la cosa en esta frase. Si tienes cualquier duda, no dudes en hacérmelo saber. O hacérmela saber. Si tienes una duda, no dudes en hacérmela saber. Ok. En inglés sería, if you have a question, comma, don't hesitate to ask me. If you have a question, don't hesitate to ask me. Huh? Okay, but we don't use doubt. All right, where am I? Ah, when a person sneeze, sneezes, it's to sneeze. Um, you say, bless you. Bless you. Ben, que, que Dios te bendiga, literalmente, porque se dice que expulsas demonios <laughs> con el... También se dice que se, el corazón salta un latido. ¿eh? Por eso no puedes abrir los ojos. You, you're dead. You're dead for one heartbeat. And so they say, bless you. Has vuelto a la vida. <laughs> that's, that's another version. Now, in Texas, well, in Germany, people say Gesundheit. Gesundheit. I creo que hay una T intercalada, pero no estoy seguro. Gesundheit, Gesundheit. Y en Texas también, y Oklahoma. Because 170 years ago, a large colony of Germans went to Texas and settled in central Texas. And German was a very common language in Texas for two or three generations. And Gesundheit, Gesundheit. I grew up, when people sneeze, I say Gesundheit. But I don't recommend you say it. I say, you say, bless you. Bless you. It's interesting about the verb to sneeze or the word sneeze. Aquí es automotopeico. Sneeze, sneeze, sneeze. It's automotopeic, which means the sound is similar to the real sound. Solo una, una sola sílaba. Now in Spanish, son cuatro sílabas. Estornudar. Estornudar. In English, sneeze. Four syllables versus one. However... In both cases, they are automotopeic. 
estornudar, estornudar. <laughs> it sounds like, and sneeze, sneeze. So it's interesting, the power of languages. In one language, with four syllables, it sounds this as automatopoeic as in another language with only one syllable. Interesting. Where are we? Okay. Uh, Cesar. In which Spanish cities do you think people speak English the most? Maybe Malaga, not Barcelona. It's the same in Barcelona and Madrid. My experience is the English level in Barcelona is not higher than the English level in Madrid. Despite the fact that most many people in Barcelona are bilingual, Catalan and Spanish, but they are bilingual from birth. People who are bilingual from birth and have two languages growing up, have the same problems as a monolingual person with the third language. My children, when they started French at age 12, 13, had the same problems as other kids starting French with only from Spanish. So um, I, I haven't noticed. Uh, maybe in Madrid, uh, maybe Madrid the, the level is a little higher, but I'm not sure. Because in Madrid, there are more multinational companies. Barcelona is more powerful from local companies, uh, from the burguesia catalana, the Catalan bourgeoisie is very famous and very dynamic, excellent, and they're excellent business people. But they're more uh, high-level functionaries, they're more um, diplomats and people in the diplomatic area. There are more people in foreign affairs, and there are more people in multinational corporations. So I think probably the language, the level, may be slightly higher in Madrid, but that I'm speculating. It's an educated guess. Where are we, Candora? Thank you, Mr. Richard, for your wise explanations. Mis explicaciones sabias. Qué bien suena. They're worth their weight. Ponme la T al final de weight. Way sin la T es el verbo pesar. Weight is balen su peso en oro. They are worth their weight in gold. Okay. My wise explanations. Ah, pero luego se... se. Okay, Candora. Rectificar es de sabio. Candora es muy sabio o sabia. I suppose it's a woman. You're a girl, right? Female, Candora. Yeah, la hermana de Pandora. La que dejó todos los malos. Los males en el mundo. Esther, Esther Muñoz. That's interesting. We have a very important person working in this company by the name of Esther Muñoz. Very good person, outstanding person, Esther Muñoz. So, thank you for teaching so well. I've been learning English with your method for many years, and I listen to... ¿Dónde está el tú? Listen. ¿Y tú son primos hermanos? Bueno, son... son how do you say? Gemelos siameses. Listen to. <laughs> and uh, except when, when there's no, cuando no hay complemento. Listen, escucha, escucha me. Listen. Or listen to me. Listen to him. Listen to the music. Listen to the traffic. Listen. Listen. Oh, qué malo estoy. Y qué poquito me quejo aquí sí. All right. So, I've been learning English and listen to Vaughn Radio every day. Dos palabras. Every day. Separado, eh? Junto cuando es adjetivo. Las, las tareas cotidianas, the everyday tasks. ¿Cuándo es? ¿Qué tipo de tareas? Pues las cotidianas o las diarias, las de todos los días. Everyday. Cuando es adjetivo, junto. Everyday. Mis, mis problemas cotidianos. My everyday problems. Ahora bien, lo hago todos los días. I do it every day. Separate. Separate. Oh, every day while I'm working. O sea... While you're working, you're listening to me, huh? You're listening to the radio. All right. I use all your pronunci... Pronunci... No hay dos t's. Hay una c. Pronunciation. Pronunciation tricks with my two daughters. And it is really useful for them. Take care, Richard. Take care, too, Esther. And remember, listen to, listen to, listen to, listen to. Annette. Hello, Annette. Hey, Marta, move it up. I can't see. Annette's message. 
Annette, hello, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's fun to be with you, good morning, good morning to you, Diana, Diana, Yaron. I really enjoy your explanations, thank you very much. Diana, Altres, from Valencia, I use your pronunciation tricks. Yes, yes, I'm almost. El otro día, I think last week, I'm almost. Casi estoy listo. I'm almost ready. I, mall, como centro de compras, shopping mall, I'm almost ready. Así se dice, yo estoy, yo casi estoy listo. I am, I'm, I'm almost ready. I'm almost ready. All right, that's one of a thousand pronunciation tricks. Abelardo. I can ask you a question, pues claro, pero es una pregunta. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Of course you can ask me a question. Anything you want, even a philosophical question, maybe I can answer it. And Victoria, hello. It's an interesting name, Victoria Lechuga Biedma. All right. Lettuce, lechuga, lettuce. Uso la palabra lettuce de lechuga cuando enseño déjanos. Let us, let him, let her, let you, let me, let us, déjanos comer lechuga. Let us eat lettuce. Suena igual. Let us eat lettuce. Let us eat lettuce. Please, we want to eat lettuce. Let us eat lettuce. Let us eat lettuce. Permítenos comer lechuga, porfa. Let us eat lettuce, please. Come on, let us, let us eat lettuce. All right. Abelardo, you can know English in eight months. How some platforms speak. Oh, I think Abelardo is referring to people out there who promise you to learn English quickly y sin dolor. Painless English. You will learn English in eight months in a comfortable, painless way. Give me your money and I will send you this book and you will learn English in eight months. It took me three years to master Spanish living here, living here. And I'm not dumb, I think. And so uh, for me, it's a, a slap in the face. A slap in the face is una bofetada en la cara. Que mi sector, mi sector atrae oportunistas por un tubo. Claro, mi sector no tiene barreras de entrada. Cualquier hijo de vecino puede saltar dentro y empezar a competir, tirar precios, tirar caridad y todo lo demás. Es un lodazal. Do you know what a lo lodazal? Es un sitio lleno de lodo. <laughs> mi sector, sector de enseñanza de idiomas o de inglés, es un lodazal. They're very, there's nobody, very, very few. Entities or people give quality. Very, very few. But that's life. That's life. And there's nothing you can do about it. Hay nada que puedes hacer al respecto. That's life. And there's nothing you can do about it. El about it. Se usa mucho en inglés, about it. Pero no se suele traducir al español. Y nada, no puedes hacer nada. Y pero en inglés añadimos about it. No hay nada que puedes hacer acerca de ello, literalmente. ¿okay? No hay nada que puedes hacer al respecto. There's nothing you can do about it. That's life. Yes. So if you fall, if you fall down, pick yourself up. Levántate a ti mismo. Y métete otra vez en la carrera. Get back in the race. Yes, sir. Where are we? Ah, Candora, you're a man. Okay. I, I use this account for my online business, Candora. All right. Cesar, Vic, Vix. Vic Vaporub is a good medicine for a cold. Well, Vix. V I C K apostrophe S. Vix. Vapor rub is a good medicine for a cold. Yeah. My, my um, grandfather was a doctor, a country doctor, you know, with a very wise country doctor. And he always said the only thing you can give a cold is two weeks. Here in Spain, people say a, a cold. They don't, they don't say two weeks. They say one. Seven. They say, if you don't take anything for a cold, 
it will last seven days. If you take something, it'll last a week, <laughs> which is seven days as well, which means I'm not sure. I <clears throat> Look, I'm an old man now. I've tried everything with colds. And to tell you the truth, it's ajuyagua. Grin and bear it. Ajuyagua in, si, los que no sois españoles, a lo mejor no sabéis lo que significa ajuyagua. Es una expresión muy corriente en España, ajuyagua, que es a joderse y a aguantar. <laughs> it means, we say in English, sonríe y aguántalo. Grin, which is a different word for smile, grin and bear it. By the way, what's the longest word in the English language? Do you know? La palabra más larga de inglés, del idioma inglés. You don't know. ¿Cómo se dice en inglés? Sonrisas. Smiles. Y entre la primera y la última hay una milla. Mile. It's the longest word in the English language. All right. Good morning, sir, from Darwin. Gutierrez. Wow. Good morning, sir. Greetings. Con ese. And hugs from Bolivia. Very good, Darwin. Pero con hombre a hombre no se suele decir hugs. De mujer a hombre, sí. O viceversa. Pero entre hombres. Claro, un abrazo entre hombres es corriente. In, it's, it's in everywhere. But we don't say it. But in fact, the word hug, well, las cosas. They're, para abrazar, there are two verbs, excuse me, two nouns in English. Or verbs, da igual, siempre el verbo también. Abrazar es to embrace, escrito embrace. Y una, un abrazo también es an embrace, y la misma palabra. Hug es también un abrazo, o abrazar, el verbo también, to hug and a hug. However, hug es amoroso. Embrace, neutral. <laughs> neutral, it can be, it can be, Amorous, or it can be non-amorous, friendly. So, if you want to say un abrazo desde Bolivia, you would say an embrace from Bolivia. But I would just recommend greetings from Bolivia. Greetings from Bolivia. Where in Bolivia? From La Paz, Sucre, La Cochabamba, Santa Cruz. <laughs> okay, where are you from? Oicle, Oicle. Oikles, de Kos, interesting name. Are there any family names in English that happen to be vegetable names, like lettuce, for instance? Yeah, I suppose. Mr. Apple? No. Mr. Orange? No. Mr. Pear? No. Ve well, you said vegetables. I'm, I'm saying fruit. Mr. Asparagus? Broccoli. If you go into James Bond, James Bond, you know, Jaime Vinculo, James Bond, you will find, I think it's Albert Broccoli. Recall, Broccoli. Doble C, L simple, creo. Broccoli. He was one of the, he was probably the most important person in the development and success of the series of movies of James Bond. I think it's Albert Broccoli. Now, other vegetables that are surnames. Vegetables. Cauliflower, Mr. Cauliflower, Señor Coliflor. No, no. El Señor, let's see, Mr. I don't know, Spinach, the Señor Espinacas. No, nope. sorry, I don't know any names. But lettuce, no, Señor Lechuga, no, no, no. But we have other strange names, don't worry. Okay, where are we? Sara Fernandez, hello, Sara. Sara Sinache, Richard, I love how you can talk about everything making it interesting and teaching us English con mayúscula, e mayúscula, at the same time. Thanks for all these years of good work. Thank you for thanking me, but I do it for myself. Soy egoísta. I'm selfish. I do things for myself. Yeah. Eso se llama el egoísmo ético. Primero, velo por mi propio bien. Propio bien. Y eso me posiciona para poder to uh, radiar vibraciones positivas. Ahora, si no, velo por mi propio bien primero y luego tengo unas dramas encima. Radio uh, vibraciones tox toxinas, más que nada. All right, so, uh, but in any case, thank you very much, uh, Sara. 
Serena, 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 ¿qué pasa que eres? La una, las dos, las cuatro, las tres. Las cinco, las seis, las siete, las diez. Serena, serena, ¿qué pasa que eres? Good morning. Ah, uh, Gabriela. Hi, Richard. Some years ago, you read or said a poem on the radio talking about languages. <laughs> Italy is for, French is for, uh, yeah, but that's not a poem. This is a, let me see if I can remember. Charles I of Spain. Carlos I de España, Quinto de Alemania, se dice. Charles I of Spain, Charles V of the Holy Roman Empire. He was the king of Spain from 1516 to 1556. Wow. 40 years. He was the king. Charles I of Spain. Now, he was from the Low Countries. Hablaba holandés, flamenco. He was from the Low Countries, but he spoke Spanish, he spoke German, he spoke Italian, he spoke Portuguese, he spoke English. And he said, if I remember right, he said, French is for diplomacy. Para hablar de, para diplomáticos, para la diplomacia, diplomacia. French is for diplomacy. English is for business, for talking about business. Spanish is for talking to God. Italian is for talking to your lover. And German is for talking to your horse. <laughs> it's a bit strong with German. But it was interesting because I almost agree. There's nothing, the Spanish language is the perfect language to talk to God. Padre que estás en los cielos santificado sea tu nombre. It just sounds better than our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So it sounds San Juan de la Cruz, Santa Teresa de Ávila, all of them, the Santa, uh, what's your name? Maria Jesús de Agreda. They, they, they were very, the Spanish re, religious language is beautiful. And Italian to speak to your lover. Well, perhaps. French, to speak about diplomacy? Yeah, perhaps. English business? Yes. But German? I don't know. I don't speak German. To talk to your horse. <laughs> I really don't know. So, that's, as, that's how I remember. And I think they say, pero estos, they say it's attributed to Charles I of Spain. But I'm not sure if that's a correct attribution. Could you, not, could you, could you be so nice to say it again? Okay. Jessica, wow, Schoenberger, do you speak German? <laughs> Hi, Richard, greetings from Tucumán, Argentina. Wow, Tucumán, el altiplano, camino de Bolivia. Tucumán, Salta, Bolivia. All right, really, it's Tucumán, Salta, Sucre, if you keep going north. All right, I've never been to Tucumán. I need to go. All right, so... Shall well, let's get back to what we were talking about. We were talking about too, too much, too bad. It's too bad. It's one of the last time I can say us. It's too bad. It's one of the last time I can. You don't have una máquina del tiempo. Me gustaría tenerlo. I don't have. I don't have a time machine. And I'm really sorry. I don't have a time machine. It's too bad. I don't have a time machine. I wish I had one, but I don't. I wish I had one. I wish I did, but I don't. I wish I had a time machine, but I don't. If I had a time machine, I would go back in time. I wouldn't go forward. But imagine, you have a time machine. Imagine I give you a time machine that works, reliable, fiable. No se te va a romper cuando estás hace diez siglos antes. And you can, you have to, but you have to choose. You have to program it to go back in time or to go forward. And once you choose backward or forward, you can't change it, which means if I give you a time machine, you have to make the decision. If you want to use it to go into the future, fijaos que dicho, go into the future. Entrar en el futuro, yendo hacia allá, pero entrando, por eso digo into. To go into the future or to go back into the past? Which would you choose? To go back or to go forward? Me, I think I would choose to go back, not forward. I'm not afraid of the future, but I'm just... The future is going to be technological, probably. Or catastrophic. Very, very good, but very technological. Or very catastrophic. 
The past is simply curiosity. I would love to go back in the past and to listen to how the people spoke. I want to go back. I said this earlier today on my radio. I would like to go back to the year zero in Segovia in Spain. When they began, I would watch them beginning to build the aqueduct. Wow. And so, ya lo he visto terminado. I would tell the engineer, very good. It still exists in 2,000 years. And really, yeah, I would like to listen to how the people speak in Segovia. If they speak Latin or if they speak a local Hispanic language. That would be very interesting. Serena, good morning, Serena. We spoke about that. Where am I? I'm losing my place. We're not saying I want it so bad. Well, I want it so bad. Lo quiero tanto, tanto que me muero por tenerlo. It's a bit, it's un poco radical. I want it so bad. Yeah, it's a bit too much. Jesus Mendoza, why do you think it is, faltel it, why do you think it's so hard to pick up the accent of another language? You don't pick up the accent just to, it's impossible. After puberty, in fact, after puberty, it's almost impossible to achieve pronunciation like a native. It's impossible. After puberty, 12, 13 years old. Um, in fact, I have noticed after the age of five, if I, I spoke about this two weeks ago, I think, but if I go to a three-year-old boy or girl, a three-year-old child who has never heard English in his or her life, and I say, uh, Pablito, book, repeat, book. Y el Pablito dirá, book, como yo, aunque no haya oído una palabra en inglés en su vida. Now, if I go to Sara or Juan, Marito, who's seven years old, and I say, and they've never heard English in their life, I say, book, say, book, book, ya, ya se nota el entronque, el entroncamiento, el enraizamiento de la fonética española a sus siete añitos, eh? Si no han oído otro idioma en su vida. All right. It's interesting about this. So don't worry about your accent. I have an accent when I speak Spanish. It's, a, it's an advantage. If you speak well, really, really well, the accent draws people's attention more than if you speak like a normal native. Si hablas como un nativo, eres uno más del montón de nativos que hablan así. Si hablas con corrección y con color, un colorido, pero con un acento la gente presta más atención todavía, porque eres un bicho raro, eres un, una cosa del, del, del universo de al lado. <laughs> and so they think, wow. And they pay more attention. So having an accent is positive, but you must have a mastery of the language, grammatically, and you must have a rich use of the vocabulary. Then the accent is a positive, not a negative. All right. Let's see. Where are we? I'm losing my place. I'm losing my place. What time is it? We only have about seven minutes left. We only have about seven minutes left. Rosa, Rosa de Mayo, Olmedo. What's the correct pronunciation? Bus. <laughs> bus. Bus. Now, the people in the Midlands, in the, in the United Kingdom, and in uh, Yorkshire, the bus, bus, bus. And in Ireland, some of the bus, bus. But the correct pronunciation is bus. Un Britannico, oh, I caught the bus, bus. American bus, bus. So no, the um, bus. But of course, you have different accents. You go to different countries, you have different accents. You say you have a estacionamiento, estacionamiento, estacion, estacion. You have different ways of speaking. However, in Spanish, the vowels are pronounced the same. That's interesting. In English, no. Bus, 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 bus. In Chicago, the bus. In, in, in uh, Boston, 
los barrios más bajos de Boston. Oh, the bus, the bus, the bus. In Texas, well, I'm going to catch the bus, bus, bus. O sea, explosionamos más la B, the bus, bus. Me? I speak standard American. I think bus, bus. Don't worry about it. People, just make sure you, they, you understand the people and they understand you. And it doesn't matter. How far back would you go, sir, when using your fantastic time machine? Oh, oikles. I would go back. The farthest back I would go, probably. I would go back to Ur. Ur. In uh, Mesopotamia, in the south of what is today Iraq, to watch Abraham begin his his trek. Star Trek? No. <laughs> Mesopotamia trek. To start his trip to the promised land. You remember that Abraham, Abraham, Abraham no, Lachi faltaba su nombre todavía. Y Sarai, Sara, su mujer. Y Lot, su primo, o oh, sobrino, I can't remember. They started moving the Jewish people from Ur to Israel in a strange way. I would go back. That's as far back I would go to try to see him. I would go back, but probably I would go back to Greek times. I would go back to the times of uh, Aeschylus, Sophocles, Euripides, uh, the the... Greek playwrights, those dramaturgos, uh, the uh, Grecia Antigua. I would go back to that time. Maybe to the Trojan War to see Brad Pitt, you know? Maybe I'd go back to the Trojan War. I don't know. But I'm not sure the Trojan War existed. To tell you the truth, I don't usually believe, I don't believe, I'm not a person who believes conspiracy theories. Teorías de la conspiración. However, there's one conspiracy theory that I believe, and that is that the Iliad and the Odyssey took place in the Baltic, not in the Mediterranean. It's fascinating. You put la, you would say la versión báltica del, de la Odisea, de la Ilíada y la Odisea. La versión báltica, o el, el, how do you say la? But, um, it's, it's fascinating. And I, I'm very, very tempted to believe that it's true and that the migration south because of climate change in the Scandinavian area, they brought down the Nordic gods to Greece. And I believe it. I think it's fascinating. All right, where are we? How far back would you go? So I would go back to Ur, to Abraham. Francisco Javier, hi Richard, does the year zero exist? According to the Real Academia Española, started in year one. You know, fine. If it started in year one, that was a that was a a decision, unilateral decision made by a person. But starts in year one. Okay, but uh, to reach one, you need to go from zero to one. For example, if you, I, I know a person who sells unos, un cañón que dispara un proyectil por segundo. Bum, 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 bum. So, ¿cuántos proyectiles en un minuto? 61. Porque el primer proyectil sale en el minuto, en el segundo, cero. <laughs> y el segundo proyectil sale en el segundo, uno. So, you see... At the end of one minute, complete un minuto, ya han salido 61 proyectiles. All right. So for me, five. if they say Jesus, well, it's true. Jesus was born in 4 BC because Herod the Great was still alive when Jesus was born. And Herod the Great died in 3 BC or 4 BC. So, uh, but nevertheless, in the year zero, fine. Well, what the Real Academia says is not necessarily what I believe. All right. But for me, lo siento. 2020, in, in a few days, in two weeks, we'll have a new decade. Y la gente piensa así. It's the way people think. Technically, we can 
argue this, but it doesn't matter. We'll start the third decade in two weeks' time, after Christmas. All right, and Merry Christmas. Uh, no more messages, okay? I have, to, I have to go. Nino Acevedo. All right. Hey, Richard. Several years ago, they used... They used to air your classes on the radio here in the Dominican Republic. Ah, Dominicano. And I used to tune in and enjoy. Some people would eventually be in my car's passenger seat. were like, really? Are you listening to English, con mayúscula e, in your car? Yes, for about seven months, we were in the Santo Domingo. But it was too expensive. Costaba 16 mil euros al mes. And so finally... No se convirtió en clases suficientes para financiarlo. So it was just too expensive. I would love to go back to the Dominican Republic. I like the... I was there. I was in Santiago, in Puerto Plata, and in, of course in Santo Domingo. The best churras, mejores churrascos del mundo. Eh? Wow. Incredible. Esta misma regla. Okay, Francisco Javier. Aplica con los inicios de siglo. But, okay, yeah. 2001, I know, I know all this, but it doesn't matter. For me, el milenio empezó con el 2000. Por mucho que Arthur C. Clarke y Stanley Kubrick dicen 2001, de acuerdo, de acuerdo. Técnicamente, maybe they're right. But emotionally, no. For me and for 99% of the population, emotionally, the new millennium started in the Y2K, year 2000. All right, so, so no, no more no more messages, please. Hi, Mr. Richard. Greetings from Colombia. It's my first time in your online classes, and I'm so happy to be here. I've been watching your videos on YouTube, English 4.0. Those are very good. Eh? English, you, uh, go to YouTube. Say Baugan English 4.0. Wow, tenis para parar ocho trenes en inglés. Uh, so para resto de los días, hasta el día juicio final con inglés 4.0. All right. Manuel Beltran, how are you? Hello, Richard. You are getting worse. Nah, I'm okay. My advice is that you should rest a bit. Why? I'll have plenty of time. Plenty sin de sobra, me sobrará tiempo when I die. I'll have plenty of time to rest when I die. In the meantime, let's enjoy life. Nah. Next Monday, I'll be okay. I have to say goodbye. The time is up. The party's over. I have to say goodbye. I have to go do television. Con esto. Eh? But uh, that's life. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I wish you the best. Take care.